What's happening, Hardscapers? Today we're going to talk about how deep you need to dig for your paver project. Let's get into this. There are many variables that affect how deep you're going to need to dig for your paver project. We're going to get into them in this video, but it's incredibly important that you do not skimp on the excavation of your paver project. The base is the foundation to your project. It's going to ensure the longevity of your project, the drainage, Everything is dependent on your base and the beginning step to that is your excavation. It's going to be a lot of material that comes out of your project, but if you start digging and you quit and you think that half the excavation is going to be just fine, it's probably not. There's reasons why there are guidelines, everything from drainage to dealing with freeze thaw cycles and to give your project the best possibility to its long-term success, all hinges on a proper excavation and base prep. And in terms of the depth of your base, there's a few things that are going to affect that. Biggest one is climate. Climate plays a, an important factor because in northern climates where we experience freeze thaw cycles regularly throughout the winter seasons, it's something that does play into factor to ensure that we have a solid foundation and drainage for our paver project. Whereas in more southern climates where they don't get winters and experience those freeze thaw cycles, they can get away with a little bit less of a base prep and of a, an excavation for that base prep. The next one is the soils it's themselves. So once you're digging and you remove those organic soils, that topsoil and the sod, you get down to a subsoil or your subgrade. And this is typically something like clay to sand to silt. These materials are going to also play a big factor in your drainage for your project. Weaker, less draining soils like clay are going to require a little bit more excavation than a more free draining material such as sand if that is your subsoil though the majority of the areas that we operate in we're always getting into clay just depends on that density of clay and for me personally in my business even if we're hitting a good solid sandy subsoil we're still doing the same amount of base material because we've already priced that into the project and we still want to get that depth in there so for the most part this does not really affect us unless we know that we're getting into a really poor dense clay project and in that case we're going to dig a little bit more and then finally traffic is going to come into a factor so if we are building a paver patio or walkway where it's just pedestrian traffic versus if we are installing a paver driveway that's going to be a lot more excavation in comparison and getting into that for our northern climates and we are located in, in toronto we're going to dig six to eight inches just for our base material for paver patios and walkways projects that experience pedestrian traffic and for our driveways we're going to dig 12 to 14 inches just for our base material alone so you can definitely tell that with our base material for our driveways about double the excavation just for that base material alone now our excavation doesn't stop with just our base material we also need to now factor in our bedding layer as well as our paver height because that all needs to come out as well to get to a point where our pavers and our bedding material is not going to sit higher than where our final grade is going to be the bedding material is always going to be about an inch you don't want to go more than one and a half inches and you want this to be fairly uniform so about about an inch is what we typically say because we use one inch screed bars to be able to screed our bedding layer. And then on top of that, our paver height. This totally depends on the paver that you're going to choose because there's a variety of heights for your pavers, but typically a driveway paver is going to be a little bit thicker, but really it's just best to choose your paver and go off that height. It's usually about two and three eighths of an inch or 60 millimeters for those pavers or slabs. So now that we know the depth of our base that we're going to install, we know our bedding layer and we know our paver height, we can add all those up to know exactly how deep we are going to be digging. Like I said, for our patios, six to eight inches. So if we go six inches plus the one inch bedding layer, we're at seven inches and then plus two and three eighths for our pavers, we're at nine and three eighths or we could round that up to be at nine and a half. And like I said, if we're getting to a dense clay material, we're probably going to opt for that eight inches so we could go eight inches plus one inch bedding layer and plus a two and three eighths inch paver we're now at 11 and a half inches in depth and then getting into a driveway 12 to 14 inches plus that one inch bedding
bedding material, plus that two and three eighths inch of a paver. We're at 15 and three eighths to about 17 and three eighths. Now, when you start excavating, how do you know where you are in terms of following your slope as well as making sure that you have a uniform subgrade after you've excavated to the top of your pavers, which is incredibly important. Your subgrade slope away from the foundation should mimic that of your pavers, your final project. Well, the easiest and most economical solution is to use string lines. So you just set up your string lines and measure down from, so your string line should be a height of paver based on wherever you're setting this. For a driveway, it's nice and easy. You're just setting up your string line from the garage floor to the sidewalk or end of the road. That's your slope, nice and easy to figure out. And then you're just measuring down from that string line wherever you're excavating. However, with the patio or a walkway, it gets a little bit more difficult because now you're getting into how many steps you need out from your back door or any threshold, and then getting down to where the top of your pavers are gonna be, and then calculating a one eighth of an inch per foot slope to one quarter of an inch per foot slope using your string lines. And if you have questions about this and how to set up your string lines, there's a link in the description below for a video on this that we've done as well as at the end of the video this is going to be recommended to you as well and now alternative to all of this you can actually use a synthetic base which reduces your excavation quite a bit we love these base panels but they do have their applications and areas where we will use them and will not use them but these paver base panels reduce your excavation to the height of the paver the one inch bedding layer and the height of these paver base panels, which are around three quarters of an inch. That becomes four and one eighth of an inch, or about four inches, if you are choosing to use a two and three eighths inch paver. So you can see how much of a savings in excavation these paver base panels can be for you. And if you're worried, if you live in a freeze thaw cycle climate, well, these paver base panels insulate the ground and they do a fairly good job of it, preventing the freeze thaw cycles and the heaving of your pavers in the winter time. So on tight access, Access projects into the backyard we will use these paver base panels they cannot be used on vehicular applications though though there is a product on the market we have not yet used and we want to use soon for vehicular applications which are similar to these paver base panels but have a different design and construction but before you start digging it's always a good idea especially if you're opting for those paver base panels to dig some test holes especially if it's a patio or a backyard space because regardless of these measurements you always need to make sure that you're getting down to the foundational soil, the subgrade, the subsoil. Like I said, whether that's clay to sand to silt, whatever that is for that area, you wanna make sure you're getting out those organics. So there's been occasions where we've dug and we've hit a tree root of some sort that was ground down many years ago that the homeowner didn't know about, that we need to remove that entire tree root. And instead of digging down nine and a half inches, we were digging down 24. In those same applications, we are digging out a lot of topsoil because it used to be a garden of some sort. So it's incredibly important to dig those test holes to see how far those organic materials reach down before you're hitting some sort of subsoil, some sort of clay or sand or silt, whatever it is in that area. And then one additional note for the excavation of your paver project is that you always need to excavate beyond the final paver by the depth of your base. So if your base is six inches, you're actually gonna excavate an additional six inches beyond where your pavers will end to be able to fit in your edge restraint as well as to give your pavers a platform to sit on so that they're not gonna slide off over time. So that's the measurement of the depth of your base beyond the final pavers, wherever that lands, and your length and width of your project is gonna be dictated by yourself, however big you're gonna make your project, but you need to add in that additional amount there. Like I said, there's gonna be a video showing up here on string lines as well as anything else we've mentioned in this video. We probably have some videos and the link will be in the description below. And if you are a DIYer and want a course on building your paver project from start to finish, we have a course linked in the description below. And if you are a business owner wanting to get into hardscaping or want to use courses to be able to train and onboard in your employees, as well as with that is a software to help you budget, estimate, and streamline processes in your 
your business, there's a link in the description below for our members platform, and that includes that How to Hardscape headquarters software, which will help you streamline processes in your business. If you have any questions, comments, leave a comment in the comment section below. I'll respond to anybody and everybody like this video if you found it helpful for whatever reason, and subscribe to this YouTube channel for more hardscaping content like this. Thank you so much for watching.